Paracetamol, or acetaminophen as it's known commercially, is one of the most widely used over-the-counter drugs for pain relief in the world. Due to its easy access, it's also commonly used in intentional overdose. Paracetamol reduces pain by inhibiting enzymes in the COX pathway. When you have an injury like a pulled muscle, this trauma damages cells, which release a host of enzymes. One enzyme in particular, called phospholipase, breaks down phospholipids in the cell membrane into arachidonic acid. Arachidonic acid is then converted into prostaglandins by COX enzymes. These newly made prostaglandins then signal healing mechanisms like fever and vasodilation in blood vessels, treating the injured tissue but also causing pain as a result. Paracetamol reduces pain by slowing the activity of the COX enzymes. This decreases the production of arachidonic acid into prostaglandins. Less prostaglandins means there's less signaling, therefore reducing pain. When taken in correct doses, paracetamol is quite safe and very useful. The maximum limit for a grown adult is 4 grams per day or about 8 pills. However, when taken in large quantities, it becomes toxic and potentially fatal. Toxic doses are estimated to be about 10 grams for an adult or 20 pills. But to know how paracetamol overdose works, you first have to understand how it's broken down in the body. Paracetamol is metabolized in the liver into three different products, at different amounts. It's converted into paracetamol glucuronide at 55%, paracetamol sulfate at 30%, and paracetamol glutathione at 15%. All three products are non-toxic. But there is a catch. When you take too much paracetamol, paracetamol glutathione becomes a very crucial part of the equation. Before it's made into paracetamol glutathione, it's made into a precursor called n acetyl benzoquinonamine or more simply, NAPKI. NAPKI is extremely toxic to the liver and causes severe damage in large quantities. Luckily, under normal conditions, this precursor is quickly converted into the non-toxic paracetamol glutathione. It's when someone overdoses that this pathway becomes unbalanced. In an overdose, the first two pathways become overwhelmed and can't keep up with the incoming paracetamol. This excess supply is rerouted to the third pathway. Normally, this pathway produces the least amount of metabolite, just 15%, but now it's saturated. Since there's more paracetamol in the third pathway, more toxic NAPKI is being produced. This massive spike in NAPKI is what causes paracetamol poisoning. Now, things start to get really bad. In order for the NAPKI to be converted into non-toxic paracetamol glutathione, a glutathione group has to be bound to it. One small problem, the supply of glutathione in the liver is quickly depleted, as this pathway is not normally used to this extent. When glutathione stores run out, toxic NAPKI builds up in the liver, causing necrosis. Extensive tissue damage in the liver leads to liver failure. And once you've hit liver failure, you're done for. There's two possible routes you will end at. The first is systemic necrosis. When your liver becomes necrotic, nearby organs also become necrotic and begin to fail as well. Eventually, the patient succumbs to systemic organ failure through necrosis. The second route is actually heart failure. When the liver dies, circulation in the organ slows down until it eventually stops from clotting of the blood vessels. With blood flow being unable to pass through the liver, blood backs up into the hepatic portal vein all the way up into the inferior vena cava. Blood backs up into the heart and fills up the right ventricle, extending the heart muscles with so much backed up pressure that the ventricle can't pump the blood out. The patient then succumbs to right side heart failure. So, to say the least, paracetamol poisoning is a very slow and painful way to go. Surprisingly, numerous case studies have shown that paracetamol poisonings have very low fatality rates, with only 1 in 100,000 being fatal. It's this low for a couple of reasons. Firstly, it takes a long time for NAPKI toxicity to take effect in the liver, sometimes as long as 24 hours. So people having second thoughts have time to get medical attention. When liver damage does manifest, it becomes noticeable as an acute pain in the right upper quadrant of the patient's abdomen, caused by tissue damage in the liver. It's this growing pain in the abdomen that causes most people to realize that paracetamol overdose is actually very slow and painful and seek medical attention. The second reason paracetamol poisoning fatalities are so low is because the medical treatment to reverse it is very responsive. Patients are given n acetylcysteine or NAC, which resupplies the glutathione stores so the liver can convert NAPKI into the non-toxic paracetamol glutathione. Here's some case studies to prove this. In the Pan-African Journal of Medicine, there was a case where a 24-year-old female ingested 50 grams of paracetamol, more than three times the fatal dosage. The woman was given NAC for three days and was later discharged with no significant effects of liver damage. 
In a different study, a 64-year-old woman ingested 104 grams of paracetamol, seven times above the fatal limit. She was treated with NAC for several days and was later discharged. Now, this isn't to say that paracetamol overdose can't be fatal, it certainly can be. It's just that the rate of poisoning is very slow, and due to time and effects on the body, people have time to seek medical attention. 